Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Wednesday version of Comms World 2020. Uh, it's an honor and a pleasure to be able to present again. I presented yesterday and with two uh, two sessions, one with my report card, one with my presentation on clusters and with an excellent uh, table, round table discussion, panel discussion on funding. Today's discussion will be on commercial, commercialization challenges for printed, flexible, stretchable, and functional fabric sensors, and uh, key applications uh, for wearables and other high volume applications. I'm Roger Grace, president of Roger Grace Associates, co-founder and vice president of the Americas for Mansef. Uh, I must apologize for the very high level of, of copy, copy rich slides. Uh, my slides typically are copy rich because people can walk away with the slides and understand what is going on rather than trying to remember what a picture was uh, spoken about in a presentation. Secondly, because this is such an attenuated presentation, it's been cut down from 45 minutes, uh, I will make the presentation available to comms world 2020 people by you sending me an email to rgrace at rgrace.com and we can take it from there. So let's get started. Uh, presentation outline, why, why, uh, why do we have these technologies, why are they important, what unique uh, benefits do they uh, provide, uh, very brief market analysis, uh, a technology status of functionalities, uh, you know, where, these, where these technologies are, what kinds of things can we measure. We're going to do a uh, very limited discussion of manufacturing process, processes and we're going to talk about some uh, actual activities, case studies, uh, products that are being available to the market today. My background you can get uh, in the uh, in the website, uh, but the key point is I've come from an engineering background and evolved into marketing and sales and uh, have been on the uh, uh, University of California Berkeley guest lecturer tour from 1990 to 2003, presenting a course called E110, The New Venture, where I and several of my colleagues co-taught a business plan development program. Uh, a little background on Roger Grace Associates. We started in 1982, uh, certainly considered a pioneer of MEMS strategic marketing and analysis. Uh, many clients that uh, we have had in the past were headquartered in Naples, Florida, and the capabilities that we have are very much uh, driven by the concept of the commercialization process, and that is here. Uh, and thank you, Steve Walsh uh, and others for helping me with this. And we work in the front end, the back end uh, of market analysis, and then uh, we don't do the product development, but we bring, help bring the product to market and by uh, executing and launching uh, plans for uh, integrated marketing communications, channel development, and market entry. Uh, so, uh, how did all this stuff happen? Well, I started in uh, 2015, and over that period of time, I've conducted over 100 in-person and telephone interviews with companies that are either uh, in the manufacturing sector, the material sector, or the uh, creation of these uh, technologies from both a uh, commercial point of view and research point of view, uh, and as a result, uh, got an incredible amount of valuable information. Uh, as a secondary approach, we've done data mining vis-a-vis uh, -vis the web, and we're always attending technical conferences and trade shows to uh, collect information. Question is why, what's important? Why do we have this? I think that this Venn diagram really tells the story. And I look at this thing from a two benefit perspective, a cost and functionality point of view. Certainly we'll see in a subsequent slide that the cost of this technology is really, really two orders of magnitude less than sil silicon. But really the big opportunity is functionality and you'll see in some of these applications that uh, we're going to talk about and you probably saw it in the presentation from the Italian professor yesterday where she talked about functional fabrics. The ability to conform to a shape is really, really important. 
Okay, especially if it's going to be an in, a human interface, and especially if it's going to be on a wearable. So this, this to me, and, and uh, Robert Andoska in his presentation on wearables will be talking, I'm sure, about this type of sensing technology because this sensing technology can be applied directly to the skin, can measure perspiration, can measure various kinds of uh, uh, of parameters by being in, in direct contact with the skin or in close proximity to it. So uh, what are the driving functions? Well, very much like silicon, and we all know about silicon, uh, it's uh, very, very easy to make in large volumes. Even more so, we have batch batch and roll to roll. So like the New York Times or Boston Globe or Wall Street Journal, this can be this can be manufactured in a continuous process and therefore be very, very cost effective. And uh, also it can uh, have device device uniformity similar to, to MEMS. Uh, low capex requirements for manufacturing unless you want to go into very very high volume uh, uh, low barrier to entry and large area coverage capability uh, I've been talking about sensor-based system solutions for many many years but the thing that's going to be important here is that it's not sufficient to just make a printed sensor you have to connect the printed sensor with the rest of the system and the people that uh, in California at Flex Tech are doing a lot of work on hybrid integration and the people at Park are doing a lot of work on hybrid integration and the people at Fraunhofer of Munich are doing a lot of work on hybrid integration and we'll talk about that a little bit later but this is what's important. Situational analysis, the fact of the matter is this has been around since 1985. Interlink Electronics and TechScan in Boston have brought out for sensing resistors, which were flexible. And in line with what we've been talking about at Comms World 2020, this technology is truly a convergence of technology because it comes together through chemistry, materials, integration, and a bunch of other kinds of things. Truly, truly convergent technologies. Uh, only a small number of companies are currently in volume production. Lots of work being done in research and and universities, but the real opportunities here, and Robert uh, and Oscar, again, will talk about this, and also David DePaula, are in the wearables for sports medicine, home care, health, home healthcare monitoring, and other high volume applications. Product life cycles, uh, I created this to give you an idea of where this fits into the overall evolution of sensors. You can see early on, we had discrete mechanical sensors, uh, MEM sensors are now in their maturity. We talked about that yesterday. And now we're ready to ramp up. We're up in the linear portion of that product life cycle curve, uh, down towards the bottom of where it starts to get linear. And then future is going to be functional fabrics. Lots of opportunities to be uh, seen here. Where did it all begin? Johannes Gutenberg, Mainz, Germany, 1440, with the movable type printing press. There it is, and it's been there. Uh, printing has been around for quite some time. One of the good things about this, and in terms of barriers to commercialization, and we talked about barriers to commercialization yesterday in my report card, is that the infrastructure is really solid. There's everything in there that's necessary to create this technology, all the way from from materials and chemicals, the equipment, uh, and the real challenge is going to be the interconnects and the integration and uh, uh, the uh, sales and distribution of final products, which will evolve. There's been a market research done by several companies. Uh, I, I I find market research uh, a caveat emptor. If people want to talk to me more about this, I can I'd be happy to. The ID Techs X people have been doing uh, a good job here, but one has to be concerned about the fact that ID Techs X numbers, which are monstrous numbers as you can see, include uh, blood glucose, and I do not include blood, blood glucose in my numbers. So be uh, a caveat emptor. Where are the high volume applications? That's where everybody wants to go because that's where the money is. Package tracking is where I believe is a big opportunity. 
I think uh, environmental monitoring is another big opportunity. Uh, disposables, uh, personal health and fitness, as we said before, and uh, also food and beverage and drug status monitoring. Very important slide here uh, from uh, uh, Alyssa Fitzgerald and Paul Werben showing the difference in the cost of, of, of uh, the uh, sub substrate per square millimeter of various materials. And you can see sal silicon and plastic have approximately two order of magnitude difference in this. Uh, what's the design and manufacturing process? Well, design and manufacturing process, uh, as I said, sheet fed and roll to roll uh, based on uh, the volumes and other things, one makes a decision. But, uh, but the name of the game here is this is a materials and an inks issue. It's a chemistry uh, issue. It's not an electronics issue like MEMS uh, and other types of sensors. And groups called converters or packages are the ones that are really in the key element here of bringing this product to market because they are the people that are cutting, laminating, and connecting these sensors and uh, other electronics like batteries to the outside world. Commercial activities, well, uh, based on all the research that I've done, again over a hundred, it appears, keyword, that there's not a lot of work being done other than the fact that people in Bosch and Analog and ST uh, could be uh, doing this stuff and a skunk works. One never knows. But the fact of the matter is, uh, and you'll see later on, that uh, companies like Bosch and ST are involved in EU programs in conjunction with Fraunhofer Munich to do integration. Uh, you'll see uh, what kinds of uh, sensor parameters are being addressed here uh, in the supplier landscape. And you can see uh, enforced touch, where, is, where it all began uh, many, many years ago, uh, as I said earlier, with TechScan uh, and Interlink, uh, forced sensing resistors are the biggest uh, part of the market today. Lots, lots of activity. Why? Because it's easier to do it than to do things like accelerometers and gyros and inertial sensing, which in my opinion is very, very difficult, and I don't know of anybody that's actually doing it. If anybody is, I want to know about it. And the other area that people are starting to come into uh, with solutions is in the biochem medical diagnostic area, which to me is going to be a big opportunity and in gas sensing. So there are people doing it, and you'll see more people doing it over time. TechScan, as we mentioned, uh, my friends back in Boston uh, have been around since uh, the 1990s. And they have a broad product line of these technologies using an ink and plastic based solution. And they are doing a lot of work on gait analysis for sports and fitness. It all started out with uh, Rob uh, uh, Portoloff doing work as an MIT student trying to understand the pressure profile of people's teeth. He was working with a dentist at the time, and that's how it all started. I saw a very interesting company in Grenoble, France. We talked about Grenoble yesterday. Uh, they're doing a unique solution uh, of uh, fingerprint analysis and biometrics using a sheet-fed solution. Uh, and, uh, and it's a visible uh, NIR-based uh, optical sensing technology, one of the only optical-based sensing technologies that I'm aware of that's doing it in printed. Uh, there are lots of applications here, and uh, there you are, bing, 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 bing. Uh, this is where the action is going to be. You can see lots of applications in, in health monitoring. So, uh, as I mentioned earlier, the big opportunities are in research institutes, and I'm going to have to move forward, and because I only have uh, approximately 45 seconds to go, but uh, we should know that AFOA and Nextflex are working on this Printocent uh, in Finland and this integration challenges, uh, again, critical success factors, uh, very much of a uh, situation where uh, the future of, of um, printed flexible uh, electronics uh, will be based on the work that these research institutes are doing. And, uh, and the name of the game is uh, there's no money in the sensor. You have to provide a solution. 
summary and conclusions. There's opportunities, lots of opportunities, and I hope you can get involved. Companies to watch, Bing Bang, further.